the, the case around the sleep-ins. Yes. So there's been a, quite a lot of case thought and press around sleep-ins. So that's staff who are working in an organisation on night duty. Um, can you talk about some of the issues and around it and where it is at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So in the last few years, there's been a number of cases bouncing up and down through the more uh, junior to more senior courts in England and Wales, deciding on this issue about payment for care workers that are working the sleeping shifts. And that, that is often when they are required to be at their place of work, but can sleep for that shift, but have to then wake up when there's an issue. For example, they might be sleeping on a ward, but then when they're called, when a, when a member of um, the care home that they're looking after wakes up, maybe distressed and needs their assistance, they then wake and at that point they then go and assist, deal with whatever the issue is, and then they can go back to bed and sleep. Now, there were a number of cases where individuals raised the concern to their employers that actually under the relevant legislation, which is the national minimum wage, they should be being paid for the time that they were asleep, not just the time that they were awake. Now, HMRC govern the national minimum wage requirements, and they had in place for a number of years that flat rates could be paid for a, a night shift where the sleeping was being worked. And it was often the case that employees, when they were then required to be awake and working, were paid for those hours throughout the night when they were awake. Um, and this was challenged because the individuals were saying, well, actually, look, I'm required to be at my place of work. I'm required to sleep not at home or outside, you know, not the comfort of my own bed. And I could be woken up six or seven times a night. And OK, I might be paid for those six or seven times I'm awake. But what about the rest of it? I can't leave. I can't decide what I want to do. I can't watch Netflix or I can't chill out or I can't you know, see my friends and family. What, what is it that you know, I should be being paid for this time? So what's been going through the courts a number of challenges. So in 2018, we had a court of appeal decision that said that actually when according to the national minimum wage regulations, when they were asleep, they weren't entitled to be paid national minimum wage for each of those hours. Now, that was quite a relief for those that are employing carers in the sector because there was estimated liability of 400 million for the potential back pay, because it would then be looking backwards for six years as well of the underpayments. Now, now the um, HMRC that police this can also put in place sanctions and penalties for underpayment. And employers were rightly turning around and saying, well, hang on, not only was it OK for me to pay a flat rate for a sleep in and the time when they were awake, you've now made a decision subsequently. I've got a bill of X million that I now need to pay for and potentially sanctions and, and penalties on top. So it's obviously a very important and critical decision that will affect the industry worldwide. Um, and they're looking at whether or not the Supreme Court last week heard the appeal on whether or not actually they were going to decide as the Court of Appeal did in 2018, or whether they were going to overturn the decision. And as expected, the judges have withdrawn from the moment and they're considering their decision and we're due to have the judgment early summer. We don't have a fixed date. We're now at the, the wait and see period. Um, there's quite a lot of commentary that suggests that it might be sort of favourable towards the employers at this point, and, and MENCAP is one of the employers that's going through the, the number of conjoined cases that are dealing with it on appeal. Um, and it, it's not going to stand still whatever decision we have. So if it's found in favour of the employers, then there isn't this potential huge back pay liability to be paid. Um, but there's quite a lot of commentary out there saying, well, it's just not fair. These workers are often working in very difficult conditions. They're poor performing a, um incredibly valuable piece of work for the community. Actually, they should be being paid for this. Well, that's not the issue that the court's considering. They're strictly looking at the legal interpretation of the national minimum wage and whether these sleeping shifts fall within the right to be paid for the entirety of that period. It's not a question of wider social issues as to whether these people should be paying for that. But you can see how the issues easily become conjoined. Um, so there's there's been um, requests that the government consider this and put in place legislation. Um, so whichever way the case goes, I think there will be change. There are a number of employers, particularly those that have the resources and availability to do it, that have increased the pay for sleep-ins and are paying at the national minimum wage rate throughout the night. Um, but others, and in particular smaller uh, care providers, are just not able to do that. So whichever way the decision goes, I think there will be change. Um, I think there will be additional cost for employers because they'll either have the back pay liabilities that they need to pay over what we hope is a period of transition rather than just an instant decision and that there's a debt that needs to be paid. Um, but there will also be the ongoing change where actually you're looking at higher rates of pay for workers more generally. Does that then have a knock-on impact on the individual and the cost of care? You know, where is this money going to come from? Because 
as we know, the sector is quite under-resourced financially at the moment. And if there's not only increases in line with national minimum and living wage anyway, when this comes in, how will sleepings be paid for and how will this affect all the other bills that need to be paid for the sector generally. So it's a really interesting time. I think we'll have to wait and see what the decision says, but I think there will be change regardless of which way that decision goes. Do you think that employers will be able to go back to local authorities and say, have a case against them? Depends on the terms of the contract. So there have been a lot of calls for action for the government to step in mm -hmm. and fund this difference between the, the back pay liability that might be due. Um, the government has, has stayed very quiet on this, as you would imagine, um, and I understand that questions are being asked of local authorities, but of course local authorities are then deferring back to say, well, actually, no, we, under the contract we were due to pay you this, and, and we did. Yeah. So I think there's going to be a big question about where ultimately the buck stops, either with the care provider because they are the employer for that individual, or whether they can go through the various contracts that are in place with either local authorities or ultimately back to the government to say, look, who, who at the end of the day is going to pay for this?